dedication, hard work, grit, determination, asking questions, humbling yourself, going after it, making friends with the, the tool reps, making friends with the CAD people, getting online, you know, searching for the best things out there, keeping your mind open, going to IMTS and different shows, you know, talking to people and just basically grabbing that knowledge, dissecting it, throwing out the bad, and then straight up through repetition, making parts every single day, going after what everybody else does not want to run, challenge yourself, don't go after the easy parts. And if you get easy parts, then run a million of them. Try to figure out how, okay, we're opening the door and running two parts. How do we basically run 60 parts so I can do something else, make the company money so I deserve more money? Or say like, okay, let's do all these fixtures, get those machines running. Now I'm gonna run a five axis part. Let me actually, when I used to opt this thing out, let me run all 11 sides at one time and basically figure out how to run it fast, what tools can get through that metal, clean it all up, how do you relax it, how do you kiss it, how do you make this part? Through repetition, so how do I become a CNC expert? Through dedication, grit, determination, through repetition, and through, through working with the right companies, like boxing. Larry Holmes was the sparring partner of Muhammad Ali for years, nobody knew him. But Muhammad Ali would whoop up on Larry Holmes. So Larry Holmes had to make adjustments, go home and make adjustments and get better. And it pushed him to excellence. Larry Holmes later on was the heavyweight champion for seven years. CNC machining is the same exact way. If you do easy parts and it doesn't force your mind to actually expand, then you're not gonna grow. So if you have easy parts, then figure out problems, how to do cell systems, how to like make things happen. And if you do difficult parts, that will expand your mind. And if you're running aluminum all the time, be like, okay, how do I jump up to steel? How do I jump up to titanium? How do I jump up to Inconel? One thing that I learned, there's a tool for every material. You just gotta figure out what that tool is and then don't pretend to know everything humble yourself and go talk to top machinists and say, hey, how do you run this? How do you run that? How do you do that? Everybody's like, oh, titanium. Fixture it right, have good work holding, understand the tooling, you know, test it out, get, get people to let you do a test or something, test it out, and then get the documentation. So through experience, you just start looking at all the variables. You look at the coolant, you look at the tool, you look at the material, you look at how it's gonna move. And then you just take that cut, man. And then all of a sudden, we used to be running titanium at seven, 175 surface foot. That's what it says in the machinist handbook. And all of a sudden you're at 350 surface foot. All right, oh, is it rigid? Well, what, how much are you taking off? Oh, this up to 400, 450, six like lighter cuts, right? 600 surface foot. That's what you gotta do. You, you gotta like, you gotta have a love for the game to become an expert. You gotta dissect material, talk to people. You gotta make parts through repetition and just make it happen.